Welcome to the Swing Trading with Cycles channel. We're going to do our update on the broader markets today. Yeah, we're going to look at the S&P 500, QQQ, IWM, and the NASDAQ. Now, now, we've been trying to find the daily cycle low for a little bit here. This blue line that's uh, you know more like a sine wave, if you will, is the 10-day moving average. This teal line is your 50-day moving average. And you can see we've closed below the 50-day moving average as of today. Um, again, it's February 24th, so or 25th, I should say. Um, so this was Friday, your last candle of the weekly. And that's an interesting sign, right? That is further suggesting that we're, we're in weekly cycle decline. And you would expect that we're going to take out this pivot eventually, right? That's around 38.84. Again, this is the S&P cash. And so this was day 42. So definitely in the timing band for when you would expect a daily cycle low, but maybe we get down to this 3884 level first. And you can see on the weekly cycle, this raises the stakes that this is a weekly cycle decline as well. Clear swing high here. You can see, well, the swing high actually is really activated below this high here. So this high was on week 16. So we just closed out week 19 here. So we're gonna start week 20. We're also closing below the 10 period moving average. That's this line here. Again, more sign that this is not just a daily cycle decline, but also a weekly cycle decline. Now, what I'll say is this 3884 level, you can see it looks like a magnet on this chart as well, on this, on this uh, week, weekly chart, I should say. But your real danger zone, danger, danger zone is that. Right, that 3786 level, you really don't want to see price below there because once we get below that, then this is really in danger. That's your potential, that's your October low, that's what's holding up this whole rally. And if we think about you know, how much of the move have we retraced, sort of thing, let's see. Right, so this rally from this Pico bottom in October to this here was 700 points, and so far. We've only dropped 250 points, so we'd have to drop 350 points to get to a 350 to 50% retracement. So that down there, so you can see it's all sort of triangulating. That gets you to 3841, so just a hair below the 3884 level, which is now sort of acting as a magnet. All of this is in the context of the idea that this may be our low, the low that everybody thinks is in the future, that may actually be in the past. This decline is going to tell us really what's happening, because even what like once you get a low, a major low, you're still going to have a weekly cycle declines. So it's a question of are you able to hold those higher lows? I mean, you can see this very clear move here. So now it's do we preserve this uptrend and keep going, or is this the beginning of a bigger decline? You have to be ready for either outcome, and I am fully prepared for either outcome. It's all about watching the price action. What you can say for sure, though, is that this rally here that we're seeing is different. This rallied for 16 weeks. This rallied for nine weeks. This rallied for five weeks, right? One of these is not like the other. Even this rallied for 13 weeks. That was the first daily, weekly cycle that rolled over. And if we think about the monthly chart, really ominous setup here, potentially. Look at this candle. Look, look at this candle, man. It's going to close in just a couple days. And so it's going to be really important to see how do we close these last couple days? What is that set up for the March candle open? Because what you don't want to see is that the March candle opens as a lower low, something like that. Now, because like let's say we have an opening that looks something like that, it also sets up the possibility that that becomes a false breakdown. You get a nice little lower wick. And so always have to be aware of that false breakdown possibility that just kind of flips the script on everybody. So that's this S&P 500. Let's look at the other indices. Let's look at the IWM. That's actually one of the stronger ones. Look at that. Look how it closed today. So they're all the same kind of count on the daily for the most part. They topped out on day 24. And man, you can see very clean downtrend here. Very clean downtrend. So move lower, then a little grind higher, then a move lower. So now is that all? Is that is it all out of its system? It's going to do that. Or are we going to do something like that? All 
right? This is what these these are your general two scenarios. And again, if you know if you understand what you're looking for with the price action, you you can find it pretty easily. And we're we're pretty set up for a swing low here. We need to make a move above 187.85 on Monday, and that would give us our swing low. And on the weekly chart, you can see it's the same kind of picture here, except this is much more bullish. This is a very shallow decline here on the weekly chart. Again, week 19. So that's IWM. If we look at uh, the Dow uh, DIA, that's a slightly different count because this actually topped out on week nine. So much more bearish than the other ones, actually. And notice that the Dow had actually outperformed in 2022. Not That's not rare to see that, you know, an outperformer becomes an underperformer. Wait, was that actually, is that actually week nine? No, that's actually week 11. And that's week 21. Let's make sure we correct that. So that's week 11. And we are currently in week 21. So the Dow is kind of doing its own thing, but it's also pretty clear that it's in weekly cycle decline. So you'd expect we make a move decidedly below this line here. So we break down below this pivot. That's my expectation. Um, and on the monthly level, notice we've been kind of holding above this cluster of lows here. And I think holding above the low from this candle is going to be really important. That's 317. So you can imagine a world where this kind of decline takes you down to the 317 area, which would be, let's say, I'm guessing right there. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense, right? So it's like this pivot is kind of holding it all up. Wow. The stakes are pretty high here, folks. And finally, let's look at QQQ. So QQQ, again, they're all doing the same thing. New low today. It's in between, in this case, it's in between its 10-day moving average, which is moving lower, and the 50-day moving average, which is actually still moving higher. We're going to have to see, do we have a temporary bottom there? Um, and on the weekly, again, same kind of idea, weekly swing high after a high on week 16. And on the monthly, what are we looking like? Ooh, that's a really bearish-looking candle on the monthly. And again, monthly is going to close pretty soon. And so it's more about what is the monthly setting up? What is, what is this setting up for the March monthly candle open? And just like the probabilities of what, what, what happens from there. So really important next couple of days for closing. In terms of ratios, IWM is still outperforming here, right? So that's your weekly, that's your monthly chart, excuse me. And you can see it's green on the monthly chart. But more importantly, if we look at the daily We've got a clear low here for IWM versus SPY, higher low. Uh, well, this violated that, but just by a little bit, became sort of a false breakdown, essentially. So this is the last low that we're working off of. What about IWM versus QQQ? Are we in an uptrend? Yes, we are. It's still pretty young, and that's the thing. This is actually one of the younger ones, the earlier ones. So this is day one, two, three, four, five. So only day six. IWM versus uh, the Dow, I, I, I imagine it's crushing it. Yeah, look at that. Wow, that bottomed a long time ago. What about IWM versus semis? Okay, that's also new. So similar to the, uh, the Qs, this is also in jeopardy of failing as well. So this is new and speculative, I guess you could say. But definitely showing an interesting angle here, right? Very interesting angle. So IWM is potentially the place to be if we can get some more stabilization from the broader markets and they finally print that daily cycle low. Um, so that's what we have for, for today. Thanks for watching.